Hello. Have you ever come to the end of a novel and felt so emotionally overwhelmed by the experience of it that you just have to sit and think about it and reread the final page and think about it some more and it just feels like it's changed you and, and stirred up so many emotions that you just need to take time with it and that's the experience I just had finishing reading Richard Power's novel Bewilderment and so my feelings about it are still very fresh and raw and I'm trying to process it but I think this novel is so extraordinary and he's such an incredible writer so the story is about a man named Theo uh, who's an astrobiologist he's devised this method where he thinks he can figure out whether there's actual life on planets that are far away in other, in other solar systems other than our own. And he's trying to get funding in order to do that, to actually make these experiments happen. And he, he spends a lot of time speculating about what these life forms might actually take on other planets, you know, given the conditions of the planet where they are in relation to their sun or suns and how close or far they are from them. And so, so that's his life. And he also has a son named Robin that has just turned nine years old at the beginning of this novel. And we follow them as uh, Robin has a very troubled emotional condition. Um, he has he has trouble at school. He keeps getting in fights, and and he he's um, he's quite an emotional boy, and he feels very passionately about the environment. He he wants to have some, join in some activism um, about changing the world for the better. And uh, so they have this troubled relationship and, and the, the school wants to enroll Robin in, in using uh, psychoactive drugs to help try to stabilize him. And the father's very wary about this because so much of the young population is being drugged. And if that's the case, it feels like that this isn't right and it's playing up to the pharmaceutical companies and and so so yeah there's this central conflict at the very beginning of the novel and also the Theo's wife and Robin's mother died a couple years ago before this novel started in a tragic accident so they're still mourning her death and living with the the memory where they're trying to keep her alive and uh, and so Robin is is introduced to this experimental, experimental sort of behavioral treatment to try to stabilize his his emotional state, and um, and so that's where this this novel begins basically. And we follow them over the course of the year as he experiences this treatment, and uh, a number of dramatic things happen, and. We follow this story, um, which is very much about the, the state of the environment. It's set in the near future in a court, what you could classify as sort of a pre-dystopian sort of state where things are deteriorating in the country, in the world. Um, there's a populist leader who won't accept uh, the results of, of democratic votes and tries to change the election and uh, and funding for science is is draining and uh, and s there's a lot of civil unrest and disease is spreading and uh, so yeah there's a lot of alarming things happening and it's it's not so much that uh, that that Robin's emotional reactions are without a cause or his his turbulent emotional state isn't justified because uh, as uh, it's stated at one point in the book, um, the question wasn't why Robin was sliding down again. The question was why the rest of us were staying so insanely sanguine, given, you know, the, the state of all of these things in the world. Um, and I think a lot of the point of this novel is sort of railing against the complacency that we can all fall into just sort of scrolling through events on our phone and and witnessing all of these terrible things happening in the world and not being able to do anything to change them or feel like we're able to do anything to change them and 
It is so moving and touching reading about this father and son relationship where Robin is so passionate about wanting to make any little change he can in the world to try to save the many species which are going extinct in the world and he's doing everything he can to do that and his father realizes that you know that there's not much he can actually do and and it's so interesting how that plays out in their relationship and and how Robin surprisingly becomes a kind of viral sensation in in a way and what sort of new power this gives him or, or new voice this gives him how extensive that is or how limited that is and what is so I think incredibly moving and effective about this story is the depiction of the relationship between this father and son and, and how Richard Powers writes about that through this dialogue I think is so effective and Robin's sections of dialogue they're italicized and um, whereas everyone else their their speech is in sort of traditional quotation marks and I think this typographical distinction I think makes it so much more effective that that Robin's voice kind of chimes out with this uh, youthful innocence and wisdom um, that stands apart from the rest of the dialogue and it's such a intimate and moving conversation series of conversations that that they have and uh, and I think it's it reminds me somewhat similarly I and mean, this might seem like a strange comparison but Cormac McCarthy's novel The Road and I guess maybe because it's a father and son relationship and there's a lot of dialogue um, as there is in this novel and there's something so intimate and and moving about the conversations that are had between these fathers and sons that it um that yeah it just it really strikes you to the heart and uh, and that's what it did in this novel and and I felt like I really felt for these two characters and and you experience all these intimate scenes with them when they go camping with each other and when Robin is especially emotionally volatile his father tries to stabilize him by imaginatively bringing him to other worlds and experiencing the life forms that might be living there and these these scenes as they go to these other planets you know in their imaginations it's it's so moving it is so extraordinary how he writes about that and it it's something that i know really connects with me personally in my own personal interest because i i do have this sort of geeky side to me that really is drawn to like outer space and I love watching outer space programs about the, the mysteries and the wonder and the bizarreness of, of the universe that we live in. It is so strange learning about, about outer space and all the odd things about it and so the possibility of how other life forms might exist on on other planets it's um it's it's sort of touching to, to just sort of contemplate uh, about all the various forms you know not so much sort of uh star wars sort of you know thoughts about other alien races and sort of battles between other alien cultures um but yeah the actual physical reality of the universe around us and and so Richard Powers captures this sense of of the real wonder of of the the wider universe and how the planet Earth is just deteriorating under environmental change and and the climate crisis that we're all experiencing the physical effects of. And so there's something really urgent and and powerful about this story and what he's saying in it. And it is tragic but also hopeful at the the same time I think in his depiction of it and this new generation that's speaking up against it and trying to enact a, a change about it and I think there is something so inventive in what he's doing in this novel in the form of the novel that it's it is in a very realistic setting but it also could be classified as a kind of science fiction novel because it is speculating about other life forms on other planets but also 
the investigation it makes into consciousness and how our consciousness affects our behavior in these experiments that Robin participates in um, that are sort of linked to his mother, his deceased mother, in a really interesting way. And um, again, I don't want to give any spoilers, but yeah, the way it sort of looks at and depicts consciousness in, in that way, I think is so fascinating and, and moving. It is incredibly moving how he shows these emotional connections that the father Theo and his son Robin still have with their mother who who passed away and died. And, and, and it's just, uh, it, I just got so wrapped up in the story of it. And I think it's so artful and incredibly intelligent what Richard Powers has done in this story and the way he's composed this story and it feels so pared down and perfected in a way that I think is even more effective than uh, his previous novel, The, the Overstory, you know, which is quite a larger, bigger book um, than this um, and is I, I found this like incredibly moving experience reading this novel of interconnected stories of many different characters all centered around the life of a tree over a long period of time and and how he connects all those together I thought was so ingenious but it was slightly unwieldy in that some of the stories I thought were more effective than the other ones and so it it um it was a really powerful experience overall, but um, but yeah, just wasn't a completely consistent one. Whereas I think in this novel, Bewilderment, he's he's really refined his style, and I know he's written many novels, but like it feels so distilled how he captures this one experience of a father and son caught up in the larger events of the world is uh, is really powerful and effective and uh, and so yeah I'm just bowled over by this this novel and I can't wait to discuss it with with more people it um it's it's really moved me and it makes me want to like go out into nature and experience it again because when Robin and his father go out and have these experiences in nature it just makes the world come alive and I think that's where partly the real hopeful note of this novel comes as well, that it just feels so inspiring and the the natural world around us feels like a wonder, but also slightly devastating in that we're allowing nature to be destroyed in, in this way. And and another um, section of the novel, he, he writes this, this quote, which I thought was really powerful, that he says, in this place, with such a species trapped in such technologies, even a simple headcount grew impossible. Discussing the, the results of this democratic election that's questioned. And he writes, only pure bewilderment kept us from civil war. And so it feels like in this, this state of like wonder that we're sort of trapped in and feeling like we're unable to change thing you know it's the only thing stopping us from tearing each other apart because if we really face the realities of the world you know we'll be in a perpetual state of panic and that's what Robin is experiencing a lot of the time and so obviously you know that can't continue that's um that needs to be like regulated and and our energy needs to be channeled in a way to affect change in a way that is positive and um I think the novel does show some slight steps we can do to to do that and 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 so it is quite inspiring in that way as well as being absolutely heartbreaking. I finished this novel feeling like really in tears and and I just yeah was was overwhelmed by it uh, like I described and and so I I can't wait for more people to read this. I can't wait for there to be more discussion about it and and I think, you know, in terms of thinking about like the Booker Prize, this is such a strong novel. I, I hope it goes on again to win the, the Pulitzer Prize as, as Richard Powers has won, won before because it's definitely award worthy and definitely worthy of a lot of attention. And I think this this novel is going to strike a lot of people, you know, right at the heart. And um, and so 
so yeah, that, that's my feelings about this novel, having just finished it. And, um, and yeah, I'm sure I'm going to be thinking about it some more and pondering it some more. And, and, um, but yeah, what an incredible experience. It's, it's such, a, such a profound novel. And, uh, and so yeah, I, I think it's incredible. So thank you for watching me blab about this <laughs> and, and emotionally unload into this video um, as, as I talk about this book. And, uh, and if, if you have read it, like, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Or if you're, you're eager to read it, but read it now, um, let, me, let me know. And, uh, and, and once you do get a chance to read it, please come back and we can have a discussion about it in the comments below. But uh, yeah, I, I, um, I hope to read more high quality fiction on the Booker Prize list um, like, like this one. And, uh, and I will speak to you again soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye bye.